So today we'll be discussing band gaps in machine learning. And um, as far as the things we will, be, we'll, we will be discussing, we will do a brief overview of band gaps and then a literature review and discuss the materials project database and API and also our next steps moving forward. So the band gap refers to the gap between the valence and conduction bands, regions of energy levels within materials. And the band gap tells us the lowest energy required to excite an electron to a state in which it can participate in conduction. In insulators, the band gap is very large and electrons cannot move between the two levels under normal ideal conditions. However, within conductors, the levels essentially overlap and electrons are able to move freely between them. Within special materials called semiconductors, the distinction between the two levels is there, yet neither large nor small enough to categorize them as conductors or insulators. And this gap allows electrons to flow between the two bands with the right conditions. Um, next slide, please. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, could you go back? Sorry, the significance of band gaps is um, they're dealt with in materials engineering in order to design new semiconductor devices, and understanding and familiarity with the band gaps of materials plays an important role in materials engineering in order to create new devices. So band structure engineering is very important to semiconductor devices, for example, and se semiconductors are the foundations for many important technologies. So semiconductors are crucial within optoelectronic and electronic devices. In electronic devices, they power essential components like transitors, and transitors can amplify or switch electronic signals and electrical currents, and they are essential for the operation of devices such as computers, smartphones, and many other digital devices. Um, diodes, another type of semiconductor device, facilitate the conversion of AC, alternating current, to direct current, DC, within um, circuit components called rectifiers. Um, they also serve in voltage red another type of circuit called voltage re regulation circuits. And um, a common example of diodes is light emitting diodes, so LEDs, which have widespread use in illumination and display technologies. Now, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so feature engineering describes taking information from raw data and incorporating it with into algorithms. And this is also very important within machine learning. So traditional machine learning methods Reliant on shallow learning include the manual selection of features extracted from raw data. Researchers often spend significant effort in identifying representative features such as elemental properties or structure, structural characteristics for prediction targets. However, this manual process can be labor intensive and may not always capture the most relevant information, potentially limiting models' performance. So support vector machines, SVM, and decision trees, DT, are two main methods in traditional machine learning for classifying data based on features. SVM uses a linear approach to separate data points into different groups using a hyperplane, while DT creates rules from training data to classify examples. Now, both SVM and DT entail manual selection of features, where important characteristics are chosen to improve classification accuracy, as seen in studies using SVM for classifying compounds and DT for making, sorry, Hughes-Lick -like compounds. Um, and shallow learning, though cost-effective, cannot compete with the accuracy of deep learning, especially for non-linear tasks, due to its reliance on manual feature engineering. Deep learning, including automa automatic feature extraction, performs better in material science using CNN and RNN architectures for tasks such as material detection and quantum chemistry. However, challenges like limited material databases and complex neural networks require careful algorithm selection for specific tasks. Also, CNNs drawing from neuroscience merge discrete um, convolution with neural networks for direct image processing, and this streamlines traditional image recognition. And um, also relatively recent, I believe 2016, progress has been made in computing resources that has helped CNN development, boosting efficacy in tasks like image recognition. And additionally, RNNs tailored for sequential data handling retain and employ past outputs, good for tasks like machine translation and material design, but they can encounter errors like model bias and overfitting. Um, next slide, please. So um, 
Uh, establishing new principles for machine learning is very crucial, particularly with the rise of deep learning and the shift away from um, manual feature engineering. But however, the uncertainty surrounding deep neural networks, which lack consistent results and also can't be tuned for hyperparameters, hyper poses a challenge. Um, in addition, uh, in 2019, when the paper was published, there was a lack of high quality and high quantity data. Uh, by quality, we mean uh, the number of features that are available uh, within the materials, and the quantity is just the sheer number. Uh, but since 2019, there's been tens of updates to the materials project and thousands of new materials added, which allows for a much more comprehensive uh, database to be used that can uh, actually better uh, represent like the complexities of different features and help improve model quality. Uh, next slide, please. So ANNs or artificial neural networks and k-nearest neighbors are used for faster discovery. And these machine learning models can predict the likelihood of calculation failures based on chemical composition and geometric descriptors. And if you look at the image, it shows an ANN model, which predicts the calculation success. And the bottom portion shows the deviation of the spin on the metal versus the total spin. So after the literature review, we took a look at the materials database as well as the API or the materials project database. The materials project database is a comprehensive database with over 150,000 materials um, and for over 4,000 intercalation uh, electrodes and over 170,000 molecules, meaning it's uh, very comprehensive and it could, it has a lot of good data that could be used um, in research. Uh, the materials project website looks exactly like the image that's uh, shown on the right, where every material is given both an ID, starting with MP dash, and then a number. Uh, every material also has kind of like a 3D render that you, where uh, researchers could actually help visualize the material, as well as more information even farther to the right, uh, such as energy above hull, uh, band gap, uh, and total magnetization. But the website alone isn't uh, very useful without the API. Luckily, the REST API is also just as comprehensive. The REST API uh, for the Materials Project database contains over 40 features, including some of the listed ones like composition, um, energy total, and surface anisotropy. Um, all of these have very unique values. For example, composition contains the molecular formula um, for every single material. And of course, every single material would have this value. But there's some uh, features that don't that are null. Well, um, for some materials, but yet for other materials, they are uh, they have value, such as the energy total, um, and the surface anisotropy, for example, uh, for all materials is null. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so for next steps. Uh, we want to compile all materials with band gaps uh, greater than or equal above uh, 0.8 EV, which essentially is in the semiconductor and insulator range. We also want to filter out invalid or incomplete data, uh, most notably uh, the data that contains null values, since that could uh, both, it, it's both uh, useless towards um, any machine learning model we want to train, as well as increasing uh, the complexity of it. Uh, and then we want to perform a multiple regression um, using the given features as well as the band gaps um, in order to actually predict band gaps of new materials. And uh, for instance, it, uh, the below image just shows one example of what we could use, uh, like using SVR or support vector uh, regression to actually perform it. And any other research suggestions or research directions, uh, since our project is just starting, uh, is greatly appreciated. Uh, next slide. And we would like to thank Dr. Ackle and ASDRP for providing us with the resources to begin this research. Thank you.